Hey up everybody, come over here and take a look at this. About eight years back, a good friend of mine is in his 90s now, and a prolific model engineer and miniature engineer. He knew I was becoming interested in doing this hobby, so one day when I went up to see him, he gave me this. He said, uh, I've only just actually give, been given this, he says, and I've not really looked at it until I'm handing it over to you. So he says, I don't really know what it is and whether it's any good or not, but he says, see if he can do anything with it. So, back then, uh, I was just setting off in this hobby, and to be honest, I didn't know uh, I didn't know if I was on my head or me. well, I was going to say arse, but I'll say backside. I didn't know if I was on my head or my backside. Uh, and when he gave me this, I'd just been making a couple of things just to get me like to wet my appetite, so to speak. Uh, so what, what I did, what I eventually did was that meter made, which anybody that watches me will have seen me make that. And then I'm making a, a sweet pea over here that I'm just going on, on to uh, as and when I feel like it. And then, you know, among other things that I'm doing. I didn't know actually what this was back then. And I still didn't know what it is until a couple of weeks back. I think I can hear everybody shouting at screen, that them that's all you professionals and experts that know, you know, different locos, you'll be screaming at me now, telling me what it is, I suppose. But, you know, to be honest, when when people's talking at my track about, did you see this loco, or did you see that loco, I ain't got a clue what they're talking about, because it don't really interest, it don't really interest me what what things are called. I've never I've never followed them to that extent. I just enjoy making them and seeing them work. I mean obviously I know I know a few. I know like the famous ones like the Mallard and the Flying Scotsman and etc etc but I'm not a I'm not a person that knows all the names. But you know that some people like doing that and it's each to their own, isn't it? But I just like making them. Anyway, I'm digressing here, aren't I? So, up till a couple of weeks back when I dragged this off its shelf. Oh, and why did I drag it off its shelf? Well, it, it was accidental, really. I've made a meter made, which is a, a quite a big heavy lump. I can't lift that. I'm making this sweet pea, that's a heavy lump. And I've, I've also made a battery loco, which is a, quite a heavy lump. And I've got to the point now where I don't think I'm going to make any more heavy lumps. And another reason is, these heavy lumps, especially the sweet peas, because they're quite big, um, they take a lot of room up. So I, I decided a few, well, a couple of months back, that my future projects were just going to be smaller projects that were more manageable and more handleable, if that's the word. I know what I could have done, I could have just took it up, me, up to my local track and said to 90% of people up there, can you tell me what this is? And they'd have all said, well, it's a it's a so-and-so, anybody knows that. Uh, yeah, well, I don't know, I didn't know it. But... Um, why didn't I take it to my track then to find out? Because sometimes I like a little bit of a mystery which I've got to solve myself. So I've done a bit of research and uh, some measuring and looked at some photographs etc etc and I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a three and a half inch gauge titch. So I'm having a look at it really just to see if it's any good because Obviously, somebody's took this out of a loco. Now, there's, there could be a couple of reasons why that is. They could have been just renovating it in general, or they could have been just renovating the chassis, or they could have took it out because the boiler's passed its sell-by day, I suppose. Uh, and I'll not know that until I have it tested. What I'm going to do then, just to clarify if this is any good or not, I'm, I think I'm going to get some plugs made up, take it up to my local boiler inspector and uh, 
you know, strip it down to bare boiler and have it have a shell test done, that's twice the full working pressure. But it's been used, it's got all soot and that and debris in firebox and tubes. I have blown it out but So in the meantime then, while I was doing this research to find out what it was, I was looking at different photos and, uh, you know, I'm 99% I'm sure it's was titch. So I went on eBay and looked for some titch drawings, couldn't find any other than new. But I also seen a book about the titch. It's called Simple Model Locomotive Building by LBSC. Uh, introducing the titch. Now this book on these books on eBay, there, I think there were three or four for sale, and they were upwards of fifty pound a piece. And uh, like I said, I, I, I'm not paying that much anyway. Yeah. So I took a step back, and what I thought of doing, I usually go to a flea market every Thursday. So I thought I'll have a look on my flea market and see if I can find a book. What's chances of that? I said to myself, maybe 1% at the very most, 1%. Um, so I went to my flea market. There must be 40 to 50 stalls on this flea market. I looked round in great depth at all stalls and I couldn't find really anybody that was selling anything resembling anything to do with railway memorabilia or magazines even and I got to the last two or three stalls and I'd just about given up and I said to myself well I might as well delay them last couple of stalls now I've done everybody else's and anyway I goes to these last couple of stalls and I'm looking at one this one stall and as I'm looking over towards other stall that I hadn't seen I saw this red book on the table now this chap won't sell anything specific, it was just ad hoc bric-a-brac, etc. And I thought, well oh, that book were read on eBay, what, what were for Titch, I'll, I'll, I'll go and have a look at that. Thinking, what's chance of that? So I went to his stall and it was in a plastic bag, I undid plastic bag. And my eyes nearly popped out of my head. What came out of the bag? The Titch book, and this book's it looks pretty much new, really. I don't think it's ever been used. It got eight pound on it, so I said to him, "Is that your best price?" He says, "Well," he says, "What do you think?" I says, "Well, I was thinking more like a fiver." He says, "I go on then." He says, "I've had it a while." I says, don't you know what it is? He says, not really. He says, I know it's a book about trains, he said. So I give him a fiver. And uh, I don't know if it was fate or what, but next to the last stall in market, I've ended up with book to match what I think is the local. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get it all blanked up and I'll let you know what happens. You know I wasn't going to take it up to my boiler inspector without trying it first. It's an unknown quantity this, I ain't got no history of it, it's been on my shelf for 8 years. I thought I'd better pump it up and try it first before I uh, embarrass myself and take it up to the boiler inspector. So, uh, I got lucky with my sweet pea, will I get lucky with this? Watch this space. Well just for the benefit of anybody that's not sure what I'm doing here, I know all you professionals and experts are going to know all this. So what you have to do then, before to do a pressure test, you've got to blank all the all the holes up that's in the boiler. So on the back head here, I've blanked the regulator off. I've blanked the um, where the gauge last goes here. Manifold's been blanked off. I've got the steam dome sealed here with a adapter on for my pressure gauge. I've got the wet header blanked off here and the tack valves one on each side. 
so that's it all blanked off now so the proof will be in the pudding won't it I'll, uh, I'll put a bit of pressure in it's got water in and it's sealed I might have just done a couple of drips while I was filling it so I've got to discount them um, so I'll put a bit of pressure in and we'll see what happens I'll just put 30 pound in to start with did I see a drip then not sure could have been coming from clyte valve ok let's go up to 50 Yeah, I'm up to 50 now. <clears throat> my, my pump don't hold, I have to just keep holding it on, pump a bit here. I'm not putting no more than 50 in. Then lo and behold, <clears throat> I can see some drips. Well, everything's okay on tubes on the end. There's some dripping though, I can see it every now and again. Right, so I can I can see it here. <clears throat> I've got some of the stays here. Look, they're dripping. There's this there's this stay on the top here, where the rivets are, and it's same on this side. The stays, th two or three stays are dripping. I've not looked inside firebox yet, but I've no need to really. But I'll just take it out at Vice and have a look. Yeah, it's these stays. So that's why that's been took out at Loco, isn't it? I got lucky with my sweet pea that I bought, but I've not been lucky with this one. There's that sweet pea boiler that I bought on a partly built Loco, or partly dismantled. I got lucky with that one. Anyway, uh, it was worth a try. So let's let pressure off. I only got up to 50 psi. I've got to get up to 160 for that to pass, and there's no way that's going to happen. Come on, then, let's get this wrapped up, shall we? Uh, you didn't think I was going to take that up to my boiler inspector, did you? Without checking it first, I won't. I won't be doing that. Um, I won't. I, don't, I won't want to waste the time. I've got suspicions that it were no good. You know, when I when I've had a good look round it and. Uh, I could see it had been well used, so I knew it had been took out for a reason. Just a bit of a side comment before I leave you. This pump here, weighs a, it weighs a ton, it's solid cast iron. You can see its size on it, it's, it's bigger than this boiler. Um, there's a story behind that pump. The chap that gave me this boiler, uh, he was my tutor back then at work, when I was an apprentice. So, uh, the story is, both me and him were, were in fire team at work, so if anybody that's ex miners or worked at NCB or British Coal, you, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. Back then, every facility had their own fire team, and, and me and him were members of that fire team. And then, a proper job, proper training, etc. Um, you know, it, it wasn't just messing around; it were proper, proper fire team work and uh, we used all proper equipment, all proper hoses and did training every so often perhaps you know once a month something like that. 
And then once a year we did a competition and uh, our team won this competition many a time uh, up at Grassmore Training Centre where they used to do it. So anyway, when, when he left work, everything were winding down because everywhere was closing. He managed to acquire this pump that they used to use for testing fire hoses, proper, proper fireman's hoses that you see with firemen that were used for testing the testing those hoses and uh, he acquired it from work and then he, he's used it and then when he started to wind down and passed everything passing everything on to me when he gave me this boiler around about that same time he passed this on to me and uh, I've ended up with that so that's the story behind that it must be 70 year old that pressure tester at least so uh, what what's what's coming up then uh, I'm not too bothered about this I'm, I've got another project in mind that it's going to be probably a similar size to this maybe a fraction bigger I don't know so that I've got that in in my head for future when I get this sweet pea over here finished and some other bits and pieces that I'm doing uh, so watch this space for that uh, so I'm going to throw this in bin go and have a sulk and uh, catch you next time then anyway thanks for watching and uh, if you found that useful interesting etc etc give me a thumbs up and a subscribe i'd appreciate that and i'll catch you next time bye for now